All right, work with lesson 156 of A Course in Miracles. I walk with God in perfect holiness. I walk with God in perfect holiness. We're going to read it. It's a shorter one today. Um, we're going to read it through, and then we'll talk about each paragraph as we've been doing and um, see if we can see what we can what we can uncover here. So let's see. Um, paragraph one, today's idea but states the simple truth that makes the thought of sin impossible. It promises there is no cause for guilt, and being causeless, it does not exist. It follows surely from, this, from the basic thought so often mentioned in the text. Ideas leave not their source. If this be true, how can you be apart from God? How could you walk the world alone and separate from your source? Paragraph 2. We are not inconsistent in the thoughts that we present in our curriculum. Truth must be true throughout, if it be true. It cannot contradict itself, nor be in parts uncertain and in others sure. You cannot walk the world apart from God, because you cannot be without him. He is what your life is. Where you are, he is. There is one life, that life you share with him. Nothing can be apart from him and live. Paragraph 3. Yet where he is, there must be holiness as well as life. No attribute of his remains unshared by everything that lives. What lives is holy as himself. Because what shares his life is part of holiness and could no more be sinful than the sun could choose to be of ice, the sea elect to be apart from water, or the grass to grow with roots suspended in the air. Paragraph 4. There is a light in you which cannot die, whose presence is so holy that the world is sanctified because of you. All things that live bring gifts to you and offer them in gratitude and gladness at your feet. The scent of flowers is their gift to you. The waves bow down before you and the trees extend their arms to shield you from the heat and lay their leaves before you on the ground that you may walk in softness while the wind sinks to a whisper round your holy head. Paragraph 5. The light in you is what the universe longs to behold. All living things are still before you, for they recognize who walks with you. The light you carry is their own, and thus they see in you their holiness, saluting you as Savior and as God. Accept their reverence, for it is due to holiness itself, which walks with you, transforming in its gentle light all things unto its likeness and its purity. Paragraph 6. This is the way salvation works. As you step back, the light in you steps forward and encompasses the world. It heralds not the end of sin in punishment and death. In lightness and in laughter is sin gone because its quaint absurdity is seen. It is a foolish thought, a silly dream, not frightening, ridiculous perhaps, but who would waste an instant in approach to God himself for such a senseless whim? Paragraph 7. Yet you have wasted many, many years on just this foolish thought. The past is gone with all its fantasies. They keep you bound no longer. The approach to God is near. And in the little interval of doubt that still remains, you may perhaps lose sight of your companion and mistake him for the senseless ancient dream that now is past. Paragraph 8. Who walks with me? This question should be asked a thousand times a day till certainty has ended doubting and established peace. Today let doubting cease. God speaks for you in answering your question with these words. And this is in italics. I walk with God in perfect holiness. I light the world. I light my mind and all the minds which God created one with me. All right. I walk with God in perfect holiness. This this is continuing the theme of yesterday, um, uh, which was I will step back and let him lead the way. And with the whole idea of that you're on a journey, you're, you're, you're walking, walking down the road, walking down the path, back, back home again. And you, you step back and you let the Holy Spirit lead the way. And, and, and Jesus is continuing that today in this, in this lesson. Um, so today's paragraph one, today's idea, but states the simple truth that makes the thought of sin impossible. It promises there is no cause for guilt and being causeless, it does not exist. It follows surely from the basic thoughts so often mentioned in the text. Ideas leave not their source. If this be true, how can you be apart from God? How could you walk the world alone and separate from your source? This is a basic idea that is, that is spoken of again and again in the text. Ideas leave not their source. 
um, so so God as as the biggest idea, right? Got a big idea, and that's God, right? It, um, the greatest of all ideas, and really the only idea, is God. Um, we have not left. We have not left that idea, right? The idea which is God, we have never left. The beingness which is God, we are still there. We're still connected. Even though it, it does not appear to be that way, but that's the truth. So I walk with God. Wherever I go, God is with me, right? And God is whole and holy, 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 <laughs> right? W-H-O-L-L-Y and H-O-L-Y. Um, God is whole and holy, and, and so I am as well. Um, we are not inconsistent in the thoughts that we present in our curriculum. This is a royal we, right? <laughs> the, the, the royal we. We are not inconsistent. Jesus is saying, you know, this is not, don't, don't think that, that this is random what I'm doing here. You know, I'm, the, there is a method. It may, it may seem incoherent to those with, without the eyes to see at present, but this is very structured. This, this whole thing is, is very well thought out. Um, truth must be true throughout if it be true. It cannot contradict itself nor be in parts. Un well, you know, he's also talking about um, the thought is, is wholly consistent. The thought of God is also wholly consistent as well. Um, truth must be true throughout if it be true. It cannot contradict itself nor be in parts uncertain and in others sure. You cannot walk the world apart from God because you could not be without him. He is what your life is. Where you are, he is. There is one life. This is, a, this is one of the lessons that's going to come. There is one life. That life you share with him. Nothing can be apart from him and live. So, in other words, don't have a, don't have a second of doubt about this, right? This is where this is leading us. This is leading us beyond all doubt. This is leading us to total consistency in how we approach everything, right? And we approach everything from a place of just this, you know, what Jesus is pointing to here, which is that God, God is, is always present. Things are not happening randomly. Things are not happening without a purpose. Things are not happening, as Jesus says, um, inconsistently. Everything is actually, if you look at it through with the eyes of the Holy Spirit, you will see that everything has its place. Everything has the purpose of leading us back home again, right? So everything that's happening, every, and so so even though it may appear to, to be that we're that we're separate from God, it's never been true, right? That 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 is that is a completely false idea. That was never true. That was something that we we believed at at one point, um, but 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 we're hopefully we're 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 warming up to the idea that that is not true at all. Um, paragraph three. Yet where He is, there must be holiness as well as life. No attribute of his remains unshared by everything that lives. What lives is holy as himself because what shares his life is part of holiness and could no more be sinful than the sun could choose to be of ice, the sea elect to be apart from water, or the grass to grow with roots suspended in the air. So we cannot be apart from God. You know, It's, it's an absurdity to say that, right? To, to, even, to even think that it's not sinful, <laughs> right? It's just that, you know, if we do think that, it's okay, right? It's not sinful. It's not bad. It's not wrong. It's it's incorrect, right? It's it's um, it's a mistake. It's a mistaken idea to think that we that we could be separate ever from God, um, and that everything else is is completely um, one with God as well. Not just not just me, <laughs> right? But but everything else as well. Um, four. There is a light in you which cannot die, whose presence is so holy that the world is sanctified because of you. All things that live bring gifts to you and offer them in gratitude and gladness at your feet. The scent of flowers is their gift to you. 
The waves bow down before you and the trees extend their arms to shield you from the heat and lay their leaves before you on the ground that you may walk in softness while the wind, sink, wind sinks to a whisper around your, holy head, around your holy head. This is a beautiful passage. This is kind of like when you get to the real world, what, what Jesus calls the real world, everything kind of leans into you and you, everything is loving, loving on you and you, are, you realize that you are love and, and, that, and that everything else is love too. Um, and that's, and that's, that's the point before you go, you return back to the oneness, right? To the, you could say back to God, God takes the last step as Jesus says and, and brings you back. Um, and the light he's talking about here is the Holy Spirit, but that light is also you, right? That is your true self. So in a sense, it's separate from you. It's different than you from what you are right now, perhaps, but it is also you. That light is you. Um, and I think Jesus, by the end of this, he, you know, right now he's kind of making it dualistic. But at, by the end, it's, it's, it sounds more non-dualistic. So we'll see that in a second. Paragraph five, the light in you is what the universe longs to behold. All living things are still before you, for they recognize who walks with you. The light you carry is their own, and thus they see in you their holiness, saluting you as Savior and as God. Accept their reverence, for it is due holiness itself which walks with you, transforming in its gentle light all things unto its likeness and its purity. Every everything and everything in creation is seeking this light, right? Everything is is you know, everything is moving back to love. The love light lightedness of 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 everything right um and um this is a this is a lovely passage it's it's poetic um that light in you is what everything wants everything is really looking for that everything is seeking that you are seeking that right you have been seeking that forever um we're all seeking that um and when you, the more that you become that light, the more others will, will recognize that in you, right? They will, they will recognize that and they'll see it in themselves. And this is the greatest gift that you could give to anyone. Um, paragraph six, this is the way salvation works. As you step back, the light in you steps forward and, encomp and encompasses the world. This is what Jesus said in the last um, lesson as well. You step back. You let the light lead the way, right? You let the Holy Spirit, the light here is the Holy Spirit. You let the Holy Spirit, which is not any different than your true self, as I said, or, or your higher self. You let the light of love, of God's love, lead the way, right? Um, and you let that, that light shine everywhere. Right? It heralds not the end of sin in punishment and death. So this is... There's no, there's no cruelty in God. There's no punishment in God. There's no judgment in God, right? This is, forget everything else that you ever learned, you know, that, that, that you, you, you have to know the fear of God, right? The, the, fear, the God somehow is going to punish and judge and, and the sinful will be judged and punished and, and you are sinful and you, so you, you will be judged and punished. Jesus says, no, that's not, that's not how it works. <laughs> Here's, gonna gonna lay it lay it down for you right now it, it's there's no sin right there's no punishment there's no death this is a um this is a gospel of of love this is a gospel of of complete forgiveness right um there's nothing to to be uh, afraid of at all in lightness and in laughter is sin gone because its quaint absurdity is seen. It is a foolish thought, a silly dream, not frightening, ridiculous perhaps, but the tiny man idea, right? It's ridiculous. It's, it's just laughable. So funny, no one laughed, right? <laughs> it's like, it was the funniest thing in the world that no one laughed at because it was, it was so ridiculous. But who would waste an instant in approach to God himself for such a senseless whim? Um, right, so why would you waste any time once you once you start to become aware of this? Why would you waste any time in 
in um, taking that idea of sin and punishment seriously, right? Crime and punishment, Dostoevsky, right? Why would, why would you take, um, why would you spend, why would you waste any time, right? Waste no more time. <laughs> Use all of your time now. Um, this is what Jesus is getting at, you know, sp spend all of your time on this, right? And, and you will be, you will see the fruits of this if you, if you really do it. If you really walk this path, you're going to see it will, it will liberate you from all, everything that is weighing on your, on your heart and mind right now, right? Everything will be taken away. You just have to let it, right? You have to, you have to get out of the way. In other words, you know, people say about, you, you know, get out of your own way, get out of the way, right? Let, let the Holy Spirit lead the way. Um, Yet you have wasted many, many years in just this foolish thought. We're going to go. We're going to go in a second, bud, okay? I'm almost done. I'm almost done, and we're going to go. You, you have wasted many, many years on just this foolish thought. The past is gone and all its fantasies. They keep you bound no longer. The approach to God is near. And in the little interval of doubt that still remains, we're still a little doubtful, right? You may perhaps lose sight of your companion, which is the Holy Spirit. Companion with a capital C. It's like your friend, your companion, and mistake him for the senseless ancient dream that now is past. So you may confuse the Holy Spirit with the ego, right? You may you may follow the ego still, right? Because um, you've you've spent so long following the ego, it's it's hard to not do that anymore. It's going to take some undoing, right? Um, so you still have a little doubt. We all have a little doubt. I'm sure you do. I do. We all have a niggling doubt, right? That's that's still there. If we didn't, we wouldn't be here, right? <laughs> we would, we, 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 we wouldn't um, be having this discussion, right? Eight, who walks with me? This is in, in um, quotations. This question should be asked a thousand times a day till certainty has ended, doubting and, and established peace. Till certainty has ended, doubting and established peace. Today, let doubting cease. God speaks for you in answering your question with these words. So if Jesus is not telling us anymore you know, how many minutes to do. He's not saying five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. He's just, he's saying, ask this question a thousand times, <laughs> right? A thousand times today, ask this question. Who walks with me, right? He's not, he's not um, fooling around anymore. The kid, the kid gloves are off here. He's, he's, he's saying, look, let's put away the, um, the training wheels. It's time to get serious here. It's time to um, just spend as much time as you possibly can doing this. In whatever way you do it, you don't have to, you, you still do what you need to do in your daily life, right? All the things you need to do, but you also stay with this, right? And you, and you let this really become part of you and you'll see how it works, right? You'll see how it really does help you. Today, let doubting cease. God speaks for you in answering your question with these words. I walk with God in perfect holiness. I light the world. I light my mind and all the minds which God created one with me. So now this is, remember I said this is, originally it was kind of dualistic, like the Holy Spirit is other than you, outside of you. You, you let the light lead the way. And now Jesus is saying, in reality, you are that light. Right? You are not different than that light. You are one with that light. I light the world. I light my mind and all the minds God created one with me. Um, so if you, because if you think you are separate, you will remain separate. But if you understand that you are that light, um, you are not different. You are not separate from that light. Then you will, you will take it maybe a little bit more seriously, um, but not too seriously, right? <laughs> but, but more seriously. All right, so um, hope that was helpful today. Um, tomorrow, into his presence, would I enter now? It's what a beautiful lesson. And we'll, uh, we'll see you there and um, get out of the way. <laughs> see you there. Bye-bye.